Okay, welcome back everyone. We're live in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante. We're day two of two days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage of IBM's Information On Demand. This is exclusive coverage from SiliconANGLE and Wikibon. Our next guest is Rich Medina, co-founder and principal consultant at DocuLabs. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So, um, I want to just get your take on you know day two here. What's what's, what's your take on the event here? I mean, that's the IBM IBM events. There's a lot of IBM propaganda be, being uh, kicked around, and they're doing a good job. We had some good commentary. Dave and I did a little breakdown uh, yesterday, kind of an analyzing it in this morning. But what's your take? Um, I'm I'm exhilarated. Um, so uh, it's it's one of the first years where we see the content technologies being integrated with um, social, mobile, the cloud, big data, and analytics. And so, at least from a personal perspective, I feel relevant to, uh, to everything. <laughs> so, Rich, you've written a lot about um, a variety of topics, yeah. so we're going to talk about some of those today. But um, there's, a, there's a presentation. If you go to richardmedinadoculabs.com, richardmedinadoculabs.com, you'll find a presentation on how to integrate your systems of engagement with your systems of record. That's right. All right so this is all the, all the rage these days, talking about systems of engagement. By systems of engagement, we're talking about social systems. Is that right, or what do we mean yeah, by systems right. of engagement? Yeah, so um, kind of the conventional wisdom today is that the traditional systems were called systems of record, and that's basically what we had until the 1980s, 1990s, and so on. And those were the uh, database systems, transactional systems, line of business systems, ERP systems, basically what comprised IT until recently. Recently, we saw the advent of systems of engagement. So that would be um, uh, social, mobile, cloud, and so on. And so a big challenge has been on how to, um, well, first, how to do systems of engagement properly, but also how to integrate them into the older, more traditional systems to get benefit and not to hurt yourselves. So where does, uh, where do, where does collaborative systems fit? Are those are systems of engagement? Are they systems of record? They could, a little bit of both? They kind that's of a hybrid? A, that's a great question. No, they're mostly systems of engagement. Um, what we, a good way to think about it, the way we've, we, we actually have to get our hands dirty and try to um, implement these, these systems and so on. And so what we found to be very useful is to think about basically most of the stuff that IBM does in terms of three dimensions. So content management, which is managing content objects, content and so on. Process management, which is managing workflow and processes and such. And then participation management, which is about managing um, the involvement, the human interaction of people and so on. So collaboration primarily falls into that dimension. Okay, so how do you integrate your systems of, of record with your systems of engagement? What are the, what are the steps to do that? First of, all, first of all, why do that? Yeah. Okay, let's start there, why do that? Um, <clears throat> well, of course, because everyone else is trying to do it. No, yeah. but, <laughs> but uh, bec because of the, the it, it makes, there's something called enterprise content management really did not fulfill its promise. One of the promises was to get the right information to the right people at the right time and so on. And it kind of, pardon the expression, but crapped out um, mm -hmm. using older technologies, maybe the web and, and so on. With systems of engagement using mobile, particularly in the cloud, you're able to let everyone who can, should be playing the game, play the game. Because everyone using mobile in the cloud can now use the enterprise content management systems and participate in workflows and so on. Um, but more than that, it provides you with a lot more um, flexibility in moving around your resources, your people, and so on. So that in the old ways, you'd have an org chart and so on, and people who were in a particular department had to work on that and such. Using some of the, the technologies like expert exp identification and such, you're able to get the people you want to work on a problem, you need them to work with them, on, 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 and so on. So there are a number of, there's about four other benefits too. So, well, actually, I want to pick up on something you said yeah. about enterprise con content management. So it seems like the, one of the problems was that you were, the industry was trying to, industry, the practitioners were trying to shove all the data into so one place. Right. And that became the, you know, the, the god box, if you will. Yeah, yeah. A and then the amount of data just grew like crazy, and then mobile and social, and you had this explosion of information. Right. Uh, and then you're never able to get to what you needed when you needed it, so you'd had a, maybe, in a case of any discovery, had to hire a bunch of lawyers to go yeah. look it up, and that got very expensive. So, so what's changed? Um, from a from a, a technology and process standpoint, to enable systems of, of record and, and engagement to come together. Yeah. So, if you notice the, the kind of the benefits that I'm extolling are not uh, they're not magical and, and so on, and they're, most of them are kind of hard headed. 
in terms that they boil down, I'm having them boil down in terms of efficiency and effectiveness and so on, and not increasing knowledge or increasing hand-holding and collaboration and so on. I'm talking primarily about increasing efficiency and, and effectiveness. And what they do is they reduce the transaction friction. So in the old days, right, I'd have to do certain, a lot of tasks to be able to get a paper document. Then I'd have to do a lot of things to be able to get an electronic document. So if the documents were in the, the God box, I think that's what you call yeah. it, I'd have to, I don't know the, wh what name it is and so on, so I'd have to ask you and you'd be out to get it and so on. Or I'd have, I, that wouldn't work, so I'd scroll away on my own hard drive or share drive. <laughs> Now with these systems, if you do it right, they reduce that transaction friction. So I'm able to get my stuff and get easy access to it, and we're able to sync and share a lot more effectively. So technology so enables that, right? Yeah. I mean, it's a sort of got us into this problem, and it's helping mm. us get out of the problem. Is that, is that right? Right. So it's the what it's the cause of and solution to all our problems, right? To, to quote um, uh, Homer Simpson. Um, on something else. <laughs> the, uh, We've never had him on the cube. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we could yeah. have him on the cube, <laughs> but if done effectively. And part of that just kind of hooks back to how to integrate the two. We've actually, we're, most of us are trainable, and so we collectively in this industry have learned a lot from falling on our faces in the last 20 years or so. And so we can use the, uh, our false starts and our mistakes and so on from doing analogous technology rollouts in the past. So for example, 10 years ago, if we were sitting here, we might be talking about mobile MFPs, right? Multifunction printers and such, and now being able to um, scan in documents from these printers and be able to do that. And we found that many organizations, when they tried to use those in an enterprise level, had many, many problems. And those problems that they're having had back then and solved, um, we're seeing folks have the same sorts of problems with mobile. So, and we know how to solve them. We've so, done it before. So let's talk about the objective. Is yeah. the objective um, better productivity? Is it to reduce risk? Is it sort of both of those? It depends. W what are you seeing with your clients? Sure. So it's um, you can boil it down. Uh, many of them are are mm, fluffy or derivative, second order types of benefits. Um, you know, increase customers, improve our brand, a number of other things. But they boil down many of them to you know making more money and saving money and controlling risk. Mm -hmm. the cost and risk of, of breaking the law and so on. So as I said, the transaction friction, that comes down to efficiency, the doing more things and reducing cycle time, that boils down to effectiveness and such, and then reducing uh, cost and risk. That's one of the problems that you, you mentioned. Um, there's, if you don't do it right, there's a lot more risk and cost that you can incur with the new uh, distributed mobile and social technologies. So f in 2006, when the federal rules of civil yeah. procedure, you sure. know, basically said that electronic documents are admissible yeah, in a court absolutely. of law. Everything changed, everything right? And, changed. And, the, and then all of a sudden, the, the, the general counsel yes. became the trump card, yep. right? And, and risk became the primary motivating factor. Uh, my question is, or, or you know, in ROI calculus, yeah, yeah, all sure. this fuzzy stuff, well, sure. we really can't justify it. Well, guess what? We're going to get sued. Oh, let's do it. Yeah. Let's spend $30 million and fix this problem. Question, has the problem been fixed? Right. And, and has that bit flipped from one of risk to opportunity. Yeah. Well, I was, I would, I would take issue with what you said. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's and that debate is that. that. Yeah. So that kind of argument, that chicken little argument, that the sky is falling and you risk mean that and so the, the the general counsel was yeah, the tail wagging yeah, the dog. Yeah, you don't buy that? Right. No, because usually most uh, practically, uh, most organizations, if they, unless they have been burned recently, wouldn't spend all that money and risk and so on. They really had to be proactive or risk averse or been burned recently for them to spend a lot of money and do the kind of inventories and everything else that it, data inventories. And you're talking do. about average mid-sized companies. Is that Probably fair? Well, big companies too. Absolutely big companies and too. And so Pfizer, Merck, J.P. Morgan Chase. Okay, I mean, these so companies. That's pharmaceutical are and also financial <laughs> services. Right, too highly insured, regulated. Right. Also insurance companies. So is it fair to say in those industries that the yeah, premise it stands? Depends. Or? It depends on whether they've been burned recently and so on. A way, a, 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 often a, a way to sell it. Um, or get them to motivate behavior is not in terms of chicken little or penalties that you may incur based on past things which were sporadic, unpredictable events, but rather on the operational cost of, of reducing risk. And that is, yeah, in the normal course of discovery, what you have to do, forget about penalties, in the normal course of discovery based on what you have to do, you incur this amount of money digging through the swamp. So if you start now, mm, doing good housekeeping, good document hygiene, and, and reducing the swamp of documents and data and such, your, your discovery cost will be less and less, and so on. Legal discovery. Yeah. Also, um, yeah, so, I'm sorry, there's two things. One is the, the proactive reducing the swamp, and the second is the legal discovery. Yeah. 
Yeah, which, which is volume driven, right? Yeah. Okay, so has that problem been solved? Um, no, it's, it's gotten worse because, uh, you know, in some estimates, and again, I'm, I'm a little skeptical about the numbers and so on, but it's plausible. In some circumstances, the numbers are getting 40% bigger per year. In terms of the swamp of stuff on the shared drives, um, hard drives, and email, and SharePoint, and so on. So it's growing at 40% per year in many cases. And so that's a lot of, you know, straw in the, in the straw hay pile or whatever mm -hmm. that you have to dig through. So it, on, the, the, on the plus side, folks are getting better at being able to reduce that swamp. But on the minus side, with many large organizations, like the one you were talking about, it's beyond human manual ability to be able to sort through it. So you absolutely need technology to do it. And even with the great stuff IBM has, that it's still it's early in the game. And so um, it's at that turning point where people are still trying to figure out and kind of stumbling around how and how to deduce the swamp. What's the gate there? Is it is it being able to, to things like is it automate for things like classification? Is it's it really it's assisted classification. A lot of it is just repetitions. That is unique. If you go back to um, like Im the imaging world and so on, capture world, who knows billions, trillions? Who knows how many hundreds of billions of documents or more have pages have been scanned in and so on, or simulated to be scanned in? So lots of repetitions as to what works in in, in imaging and OCR and ICR and so on. Those kinds of repetitions and experiments have not been done yet in the automatic classification and reducing the swamp. There just has to be some time. Um, so there's a difference between people who buy the products and so on and start to implement them, and people who have gone and, and done it for years and so on and come out the other side. And same, same sort of thing with records management and e-discovery and such, particularly records management. That's been around si since the 90s. And there hasn't been actually for enterprise deployments a lot of experiments and repetitions on that. Rich, John, you, you want to jump in here? Yeah, sure. no. <laughs> since I'm dominating this, I get 20 more questions. Sure. If you want. No, I know, this is Dave. This is Dave Love. <laughs> Dave loves e-discovery and whatever. That, that's the, the old term. Dave um, loves e-discovery. Dave always brings up this, this conversation almost yeah. every time. Yeah. I always want to talk about Bitcoin. Uh, but uh, ah. <laughs> we were talking about Bitcoin last night. That was a yeah. good conversation. <laughs> As you non sequitur, I had to get that in there. Bitcoin <laughs> hashtag. Um, chief data officer, Dave always brings up this concept. Do we need a chief data officer? And and, and that is a person who is going to be the czar of data. And there's been debate. No, yes. Judith Hurwitz is like no freaking way. IT reporting IT, to IT. Who or manages not. the data? The business units. The line of. Uh, this is, a, this is the challenge. What's your take on this whole conversation? Is, do we need a chief data officer? Did the chief security officer help us with security? So these are the conversations that, that we were having yesterday. What's your take on that? Yeah, so and, and by data, just one clarification, do you mean also the, the unstructured documents and so on and the, the content coming from social media? Yeah, or do you absolutely. Just mean, yeah. All, right, so for all, all, all data, I mean. Is no, that, there is a definite gap in their billing um, uh, vision and management and, and a locus of responsibility um, for for information, and um, it, <laughs> big gaps in, in the data, just in the, in the structured data world, as well as in the unstructured data world, and so on. No one wants to take ex responsibility and and be able to and have the vision as well as the the, res mm, the oomph to be able to get make things happen. I don't know if it's a chief data officer. I've been through so many propo uh, proposed, you know, three-letter acronyms for that role. Whether it's chief data, chief information officer, chief uh, knowledge officer, um, chief records officer, all of them, most of them have come by the wayside. You know? The question is, where are we in the innovation uh, cycle? I mean, the stra innovation strategies are grounded in data now, and, and you have legacy infrastructure, legacy formats, legacy baggage. No, I, I'm with you. But part of the, the data, part of the, you know, the, the two dimensions I've been talking about, it's the, man the responsibility, let's see here. What needs to be done is to be able to manage, govern, governance on not just the, uh, the content, the objects, but also the processes to follow, you know, show that you're following um, compliant um, processes and now in participation, the, the, you know, who, who owns the mobile device management, the policies around mobile and the cloud and social and so on, does that follow, fall under the CDO or not? There definitely has to be, a, 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 there is a role for this um, CDO type person who would do the defensive and the administrative and the offensive aspects for data. I don't know if you call him the data or her, the data ma the CDO. So but mobile has totally gap. changed the equation, obviously. Yeah. You guys are experts yeah. in mobile. You mentioned that up front. Um, and, it, and it basically just, it, it sends risk even further out you yeah. know, onto the, to the user's yeah, yeah. You know, hand. So talk about mobile as a challenge. Talk about how you guys address that and then we'll close. 
Well, with mobile, again, we assimilate it to previous instances of, of when technologies were rolled out that were distributed where things got out of hand quickly, whether it was Lotus Notes, not because of the technology, but because of folks organically growing it like weeds and then SharePoint, MFPs, a number of other things. And so what you often see is you start out in the middle. That is, you go into an organization and you see that they're sprouted around and it's unmanaged and so on. So what you have to do is to get, start the building, the, see what the state, current state is, the state of um, fragmentation and mismanagement and so on, and then do, a pol do policies for mobile and for social and for some other areas, and then try to rein them in and then provide alternatives, good routes, so a good navigable route that's safe rather than this you know, swamp with rocks and so on to mix metaphors. And so then you start uh, 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 building, uh, designing and so on applications, one of which is for broad superficial uh, mobile use which is, and also for sync and share and so on. And then you start talking about more sophisticated uh, use in the, with, with business processes for internal business processes, say for accounts payable and HR and so on. And then for line of business processes, maybe for new drug approval and so on, those uh, manuf and so on, you were talking about Pfizer, or for um, customer, new, new account onboarding, say in financial services. Um, and so it's a combination of first seeing where, where you are building rules and policies that day forward you begin to sin no more, and then building good behavior and routes so that people will be more efficient using the new ways rather than the old ways. Awesome. Well, listen, uh, Rich, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE, and uh, we could go on forever on this topic, and uh, the problems just keep mounting as the data grows, as you get new technologies like mobile. Um, it's a real challenge that you're trying to solve, so appreciate you coming on. And uh, thanks for sharing your insights. Thank you very much. Okay, they we're live here. Exclusive coverage, SiliconANGLE Coupons, exclusive coverage of information on demand, IBM's conference, big data analytics, social business, cloud and mobile, all here, right here in theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. We'll be right back after this short break.